Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. This is your weekend edition. So this is going to be a reading for the weekend of October 26th through the 28th. Yeah, so it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I hope everyone has had a good week. Um, yay, it is Friday <laughs> as of the moment that I'm recording this. Woo, Friday. Um, I hope everyone has a great weekend. Yeah, um, it was, it's been a really intense week. We did have the full moon on Wednesday, the 24th. And, you know, that was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot. And so now we've got the weekend. Yeah. Yay, weekend. Hmm. All right, guys. So let's just get straight into it. Yeah, this is going to be a general energy reading. This is not love specific. This is not career specific. This is just the energies of the weekend, okay? And also, this is just the message that wants to come through at this moment in time, just because it is labeled as for the weekend of the 26th to the 28th. That does not mean that it has to resonate at this time, okay? It can resonate at another time. It could resonate for, you know, next week, you know, who knows, but... Anyway, just want to throw that out there. And also, this is not sign specific, okay? This is for the collective. Yeah? Awesome. Let's get to it. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages for the weekend of October 26th through the 28th to serve the highest good of all involved. Yeah? Thank you so much, Spirit. Alrighty, guys. Um, I saw a flash of green while I was praying over the cards just now. So I feel like um, there's some heart chakra activation going on, heart chakra clearing. That could be residual from the full moon. Um... There could be some celebrations over the weekend. Maybe some Halloween parties, because Halloween is next Wednesday, I believe. The coming is coming Wednesday. Um, just a time for friendship and that sort of thing. If you've been kind of like in a cocoon lately, like just kind of hibernating, keeping to yourself, mainly because of the full moon, because things have been so intense lately. Um, you might be coming out of your shell a little bit. That's just something I'm picking up on. One more shuffle, and then we'll see what we've got for the weekend. And this is going to be a little bit of an extended version because I'm doing for like the, the today tomorrow, uh, Saturday and Sunday, I'm going to do a little bit of an extra pull just to get some more guidance for us. Yeah? All right. <laughs> Take a sip of my coffee here. Okay. So let's see what we've got for your weekend, guys. Let's see. Friday, the 26th, 7 of Wands, okay, to the 28th. All right, so definitely there's some boundaries here. Um, Seven of Wands, the Two of Cups in reverse. Ooh, yeah, all right. So some of you are pretty guarded right now. We've got the Ace of Cups, though. Interesting. All right, I'm going to start here. Underneath the deck, we have the King of Pentacles. Okay. Um, this is interesting. So you've got the Seven of Wands with the Two of Cups. Okay. So, but the Two of Cups is in reverse here. All right. So there's definitely some guardedness. There are some individuals. There, I really feel like there are some situations in which um, there's a hard blockage. There could be someone from the past could come back and want to talk to you, want to reconnect, maybe want to have a weekend fling. <laughs> um, maybe, uh, but there's an energy of there's someone that wants to come forward that's kind of being blocked right now with the Seven of Wands and the Two of Cups in reverse. But then at the same time, you've got... <laughs> 
You've got the Ace of Cups on this side. You've got the Page of Pentacles. And then you also got you have the You Are One card, which is one of the extra cards in the deck here, okay? Uh, in this deck, this is one of the... Um, uh, one of two special cards. And so, all right. Um, some of you could be, there could be, there really could be a soulmate here that wants to come in. Um, someone that's just interested in you. You could be interested in someone else. Um, but someone's just not having it. <laughs> but this is all in service of self-love, okay? The, the, I really feel like whoever is going through this energy right now um, is really focused on the self, on the self-love here. It is with the Ace of Cups, you are one. You are one um, says, talks about authenticity. And, it's a, and the story behind this card is this character, this young girl, um, she was born different. She's, you know, she's light skin. She has like white hair and a red mask on her face instead of, uh, instead of like darker skin, darker hair and a black mask across the face, like the others in her community, in her tribe, in her whatever. And so she has been cast out because the people, um, the people that she, you know, the community that she was born into, she's so different that people take that as she's just going to cause trouble. And so, you know, she was kind of ridiculed and kind of outcast. And so she leaves that environment to go in search of something, uh, of a search of an environment that is more beneficial to her. Um, a group of people that, you know, will accept her for who she is, okay? So there's very much an energy of self-love here. All right? Um... And with the page of pentacles, it's like, I feel like some of you are in, well, definitely, especially coming out of this past week, some of, some of you are in a brand new stage in your lives. Um, and it's almost as if you are feeling like you are starting over, okay? So with the page of pentacles and the ace of cups here, there's definitely that energy, okay? There's the energy of being in a new cycle, in a new reality, um, you know, your life is just very different from where it was in the past. And so now you're, you're, you're re learning this self love thing. You're re acclimating with yourself with self love. Um, and that's really where your focus is. So that would be why you have, why you could have the seven of wands and the two of cups here and the two of cups is in reverse. Now, what I am going to say here is I really feel like there's no need to be that defensive, okay? Because what the, with the Two of Cups here in reverse, it doesn't feel bad. It actually feels genuine what's coming through with this Two of Cups. But you've got, as well as the, you also have the King of Pentacles here underneath the deck. So what that is saying, to me, what that's saying is if there is someone that's trying to come forward here, they're actually much better than you think. Um, I feel like they're very grounded, very stable. Um, and here, King of Pentacles does say, this is also, this is the Taurus card. So you could be, there could be a Taurus that's trying to come forward here. Or another Earth sign, Capricorn or Virgo. But it doesn't have to be that. It, ha it can be any sign, okay? But the, uh, this card says loyalty is the key word. And I really feel like whoever is trying to come forward in your life here, whoever this Two of Cups situation is, I feel like they're really not as bad as you might think. And um, some of your guardedness, some of your defensiveness might be getting in the way a little bit. Of course, I totally understand why you would be in that state. Given what we went through <laughs> this week, um, I would totally, totally understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull some clarifiers for this. And then I'm going to pull everything back in and get a second pull for the weekend to see what else we've got going on okay and um just so you guys are aware a garbage truck is pulling up so it could get a little noisy i'm gonna do my best to speak over it but that's on its way <laughs> just so you're aware all right okay I'm going to start with this end of the equation here with the Ace of Cups, the Page of Pentacles, and you are one. It's just there's a really, there is an energy of 
having reset, okay? Um, and already, already underneath the deck, we have the Three of Pentacles, all right? So self-mastery. So you're definitely doing some self-care, working on yourself. Um, you really, honest, honestly, you could be really focused on work right now, business, finances, that sort of thing. And that's okay. It's just, you know, it's the weekend. If you have some time to not focus on work and to, like, have some fun, I would say try and do so, all right? Mm. Also, something that I'm getting here with the Seven of Wands and the Two of Cups in reverse, this isn't necessarily um, a hard blockage, okay? But with the Two of Cups in reverse, it's just about things aren't quite... There's a little bit of a block, but it's not a complete block. It's like I'm not seeing everybody just completely hard passing on something. There's just, there's resistance. That's what I'm getting the most of for the most of this right here. It's resistance, okay? Um, it, but in relation to what else is going on here, it's probably a bit of healthy resistance. Not going to lie, all right? So let's pull, let's clarify this side of the equation here first. Clarification, please. Ah. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, all right. Underneath the deck, you have the emperor. So this is definitely taking control of your taking control of your life. Okay, you're taking your life back. Okay, um, you have the star. <laughs> you have the star. You've got the queen of pentacles. All right. So here are the counterparts. On this side of the equation, we have the king of pentacles. On this side of the equation, we have the queen of pentacles, okay? So, like I said, there's definitely some healing going on. Um, some healing and some uh, working on self-love, okay? And the queen of pentacles, I believe the queen of pentacles, did it come out yesterday? Um, and this is wifey status with the queen of pentacles, all right? So... What I feel like is what's happening here is, you know, for most of us, this self-care that you're doing, um, this, uh, this start, this new start, I really feel like someone wants to come forward and offer some sort of love here, okay? But for the most part, you are working on this self-love on your own. You're, like, really taking the steps to to do this self-care, okay? And that's really setting you up for wish fulfillment in a way with the Queen of Pentacles and the star. Now, I do I do feel like this Queen of Pentacles energy is something that you are exhibiting towards yourself, caring, compassionate, um, nurturing, homebody maybe. Um, again, you could be dealing with another earth sign, um, but it doesn't have to be that. It's, so this is twofold, really. It feels twofold. It's first... You're showing that love and compassion and nurturance to yourself, which is helping you heal. But at the same time, and this is something that I don't think I don't think you're necessarily aware of, maybe because you're just not focused on it in that way. But because you're doing this, you are actually setting yourself up and making yourself very attractive for a king of pentacles, for a counterpart to come in. Okay, and that's what I feel like is happening here. Now, you had another card that flew out. Yeah. And it flew out on uh, the Seven of Wands and the Two of Cups in reverse. And that is the Ten of Wands. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So why is this Two of Cups situation, why is this soulmate situation being blocked? Or it's And it's not a complete no, okay? It's absolutely an energy of, you know, there's just a bit of resistance here. Someone really has their guard up. Um, someone really is, is setting forth some strong, strong boundaries. Um, uh, and that's, and I'm getting, and clarifying that we have the 10 of wands. And so I'm getting a few things with that. One, burdens from the past are causing this blockage. Okay. Someone might still be carrying a pretty heavy load. Someone might have some, some baggage associated with what's gone on in the recent past. Um, and that could be why a soulmate that's trying to come in is kind of being kept. It's like they're being kept at arm's length. Okay. Now, the other thing I'm getting with that is, yes, that there's baggage, there's, there's burdens. Um, but in some cases, some of us are holding on to those and they're un it's unnecessary for us to hold on to them. Okay. I do want to point out 
that and underneath both of the decks here you have the Emperor and the King of Pentacles. And both of those energies are about loyalty and commitment, all right? So some of you are really trying to manifest a commitment. Um, and, and to be quite honest, you have set yourself up, or at least you are in the process of setting yourself up, putting yourself in that position to receive an offer, okay? Also, the Page of Pentacles, the Page of Pentacles can be seen as an offer coming through. So I really feel like whatever work you are doing is preparing you, whatever healing you're doing, the self-love that you're, that you're exhibiting is really preparing you for some sort of wish fulfillment when it comes to having a family, um, you know, that kind of thing. And that's quite beautiful. It really is quite beautiful. So I'm hearing don't be so defensive because not all relationships, not all situations are going to be like what you come out of from the past, okay? Especially if you don't want it to be that way. If you just take what you learned from that situation and move forward without ex without the expectation of recreating like, oh, well, everybody's going to do this and that to me. No, just take what you learned from it. Take the self-love that you're now cultivating from it and move forward and go for what it is you want, okay? Yeah. Well, this feels good, though, guys. Don't have to be afraid of love, okay? So I realized yesterday that I didn't pull a Whispers of Love card to end the reading. So I'm going to do that now. And then I'm going to reset everything, get a second poll for, because this is the weekend edition. And then we'll see what comes out after that, yeah? But especially since this part of the reading is centered around some sort of relationship trying to come in. Um... I definitely want to pull some extra guidance from the Whispers of Love in relation to that. Also, especially since Venus is in retrograde, okay? So, and and actually, I really feel like whatever work you guys are doing here on this side of the equation in the form of self-love is absolutely what the doctor ordered when it comes to Venus being in retrograde, okay? Venus in retrograde is helping us redefine what it is we want in a relationship. Um, and so... If you're really honoring yourself, if you're really doing what it is you need to do to be whole and healed and feel happy and comfortable and independent, um, you are setting yourself up for victory, <laughs> okay? Uh, with the star and the queen of pentacles. The star is healing. The star is wish fulfillment, all right? Faith and hope. Have faith and hope that you will find, I mean, you have the counterparts here, the king and the queen of pentacles, okay? Just saying, just saying. <laughs> All right, let's see. For the first, for this part of the reading here, what is the oracle guidance for the collective? Woo. Okay, there we go. Underneath, the, ooh, sorry guys. Ah, underneath the deck we have "I love you." Okay, there is love coming in here, guys. There is love coming in. I'm sorry. Let me do it this way. I don't want to. Now. I want you guys to take note of where these cards have fallen, <laughs> okay? One of our, our oracle cards has fallen on the King of Pentacles, right? And the Emperor. And I was saying that King of Pentacles is someone that's trying to come in. It could also be you. You could be that King of Pentacles. See? See? You see what I mean? Card number six. Be willing to express love. When we express love, we begin to receive more love. And this fell over here. All right. So I'm going to take this as the oracle guidance for this situation here. You don't have to be so defensive. I'm not saying make yourself 100% completely vulnerable for you to just be shot down and dragged through the murt again, through the murt, through the dirt again, ridden roughshod over again, because that was a message that came through. All right. For the week. But also you don't need to be so defensive. You can show love and appreciation for someone, even if you are still in this process of trying to just love yourself a little bit more, okay? The other message is, aw, card number 36, turn on your heart light. Allow yourself in this moment to reflect on a time when you experience love. So, and the fact that that fell on this, the emperor and the king of pentacles here, um, 
that to me is saying, remember, re re reconnect with the moments that you felt love and allow this love to now come forward towards you, okay? Turn on your heart light. I mean, there's, there, the, I really feel like I'm hearing that for some of you, there's a divine partner that's coming forward, or at least that's trying to come forward. Um, and I'm not saying you have to rush into anything because the King of Pentacles is not really going to rush. Okay, the King of Pentacles is going to take his time. So, and if you're not in a position where someone is actually pursuing you right now, is trying to get, you know, trying to talk to you or whatever, set yourself, you're setting yourself up for this, okay? You are doing the healing and the the work to get this going, okay? Okay. But that feels really good, guys. That feels really good. So let me just reset here really quick. And then I'm going to get a second pull because this is the weekend edition. So we are doing a little bit of an extended version, okay? So we're just, we're going in. As, as usual, we're going in for the weekend, right? Extra message here. Forgiveness. Ooh, yeah. Card number 29, which boils down to 11. Nothing can be gained by holding on to past disappointments, okay? So that, again, learn from the past. And just move on. Forgive. And forgiveness is more about, is more for yourself than it is for the other person, okay? So, honestly, you gotta forgive the past and let it go, or you're just gonna continue to be haunted by it, alright? So, if you don't wanna relive the past, forgive it. You know, forgive yourself for it. Forgive whoever is, ooh, Eight of Wands. There could be some communication this weekend. Um, oh, goodness, what's this? Ah! Ten of Cups. All right, so look, guys, some of you really do have fulfillment coming down the line, okay? High Priestess is coming out now, but you don't really know it. There are some secrets surrounding it. It's kind of hidden. It's unseen. Um, there is some stuff happening behind the scenes. But in order for that to come through, you have to, you have got to forgive the past. You've got to forgive the past and just move forward, okay? Uh, like... Please, don't let me tell you what to do, but at the same time, stop dwelling in the past, because it's only hurting you. It's only blocking the new that's trying to come into your life, okay? All right, guys. So, let's get to part two of our weekend edition here. <coughs> <coughs> Alrighty. Okay. 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 Alright. Woo. Okay. The Ace of Wands just flew out. We also got the Two of Swords now. Alright. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Ace of Wands is in reverse. Two of Swords. I can already feel like this is an extension. Yeah. The Hanged Man. Alright. This is an extension of what we were talking about earlier beginning of the good lord okay oh man oh ho, 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 man we've got the hermit that's enough all right cool underneath the deck wow <laughs> wow so underneath the deck now we have the knight of pentacles okay hmm the knight of wands the king of cups the hermit and the emperor but the emperor is in reverse here this is interesting. I actually think the emperor needs to go on this side. Very interesting. It's okay. Over on this side of the pile, we've got... I don't know where this emperor goes. I'm really just not sure. But let's, let's just read for a second. We've got the Ace of Wands and we've got the Two of Swords. And with that, we also have the Hanged Man. Or in this deck, it's called the Hanged One. Um, and I love that it's depicted as... It can kind of look like it's Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> and and that, that, that story is really all about perception. And that's what this card is here. Perception, right? So... Some of you are, again, some of you are blocking um, a passionate, creative new start, 
Um, I really feel like someone is super passionate here. But there is an energy of, with the Two of Swords, it's like, well, indecision. Well, kind of almost like blindfolding yourself to the situation. Um, confusion is the, the key word here on this card. But to me, the confusion is confusion is more Eight of Cups. Um, the Two of Swords, is to me, is indecision and also refusing. Refusal. A lot of the time, it could, it could be refusal to see something for what it truly is. And here you have the Hanged Man, which is all about perception. Um, it's about being or putting yourself self-imposed isolation, self-imposed precarious position. Um, but that is in service of gaining enlightenment, of seeing things differently. And... In this case, <clears throat> I feel like the individual that is resonating with this is putting the is keeping themselves in a two of swords energy, and ultimately that's kind of forcing them to be in a hanged man situation. Um, and so the hanged man is not self imposed. From what I'm feeling right now, the hanged man is more of um, a circumstantial imposition of this of this um, precarious position that will lead to enlightenment, but that's because someone is refusing to see something differently, is refusing to see the truth of the matter, or is refusing to make a decision, okay? Um, on this side of the pile, you've got the King of Cups, the Knight of Wands, the Hermit, and then underneath the deck, you have the Knight of Pentacles. Um, so the King of Cups can be talking about Scorpio, okay? We are in Scorpio season. Um, and with the Hermit here, I really do feel like um, Scorpio season has a lot to do with what's happening here. There's a lot of introspection happening. You have introspection or seeing things differently, seeing things clearer, potentially, on both sides of the table here, um, between the Hanged Man and the Hermit, okay? Here's that Knight of Wands energy I was talking about. So... Um, you could be dealing with someone that's trying to come in hot and heavy. You could be. Um, I'm just, it's interesting because then underneath the deck you have the Knight of Pentacles. So what I really feel like, someone has, some. <laughs> ooh, okay. Um, okay, so I just wanted to pick up the Knight of Wands, but it's coming with the King of Cups, so I'm going to read it this way. Someone has the hots, but also someone is in love um, or feels very deep, a very deep connection, very affectionate connection for someone. And because of that, they are, even though they have the Knight of Wands energy here, I really feel like they're not moving too quickly because you've got the Hermit and then you have the Knight of Pentacles underneath the deck. So what I was getting with picking up the, sorry, there's another truck rolling through, but what I was getting with the King of Cups and the Knight of Wands, because of this deep love or appreciation or affection or just feeling this strong connection with someone, this Knight of Wands energy is becoming tempered in a bit. Um, there is a, there is a bit of introspection going on in the sense of, well, could I really be enough for this person or could I really stand up? Um, um, is, what is, oh, could I be enough for this person potentially? Um, but it's more about wanting to show the inner light, wanting to, to know the true person instead of just rushing in and acting on some sort of um, passionate but like animalistic, <laughs> um, lustful desire, okay? It's like, it's like the fire of the Knight of Wands is being tempered, um, but is being used to fuel a deeper agenda. Ooh, agenda. Oh, I don't know. But, and all of that, I'm saying all of that because at the bottom of the deck here is the Knight of Pentacles. So someone is really willing to take it slow, take it step by step, not really rush into the situation. Even though there are these, there's this energy of the Knight of Wands of wanting to move forward quickly, feeling very passionate, feeling very driven. The Knight of Pentacles 
underneath the deck is really saying like, whoa there. Whoa there, let's take it step by step. Because I really feel like a lot of us are done with the whole energy of you know, I'm just going to rush in and take advantage of the situation and whatever happens, happens. It's like, no, we don't, we're, we're grown adults here. We don't, we, <laughs> we, don't, we don't have time for that bullshit anymore. Now, in between everything, we have the emperor in reverse. And to me, especially since the emperor came out in the beginning, um, as through the clarifying deck, now we have the emperor in reverse. And that is what it's almost like what's between the two parties here. And it's so funny. If you watch Sal of Eat, Read, Love, his readings are set up like this now. And it's so funny that they that came out this way. Um, person A has three cards. Person B has three cards. And then there's a card in the middle that's the, um, the divide. So I, and I didn't really mean for it to happen this way. So... It just kind of happened, and so I was, I was, that I wanted to point that out because I know some of you guys watch him. I, I love Sal; he's hilarious. His readings are so much fun. Um, but if you're watching this, hey Sal, <laughs> thanks for, le thanks for lending me your spread. <laughs> but anyway, what we have in between the two parties here is the emperor in reverse. So there's too much control. There's there's an overexertion of control, and I feel like. Excuse me, guys. I feel like there's so much control here because of fear. There's definitely some fear involved. Um, and there's also, there's a desire for freedom that I'm getting from the emperor in reverse. Not, not wanting to be told what to do. Um, and I feel like some of you, like, okay, for some of you that are dealing with a twin flame situation, um, you could be coming out, like, you could be of the part of the group that, um, you know, has left the divine masculine behind. Well, and not left, left, left the divine masculine behind, but, like, moved forward, moved on with your journey, um, you know, kind of left the situation behind. And... I feel like for some of you, you, your divine masculine could have been very controlling, um, very much requiring you to be a certain way, to show up in a certain way, which is such bullshit because then um, in most of those cases, they wouldn't do the same for you should you say, like you were saying it. If you're the divine feminine in the situation and you were saying, look, this is, it's X, Y, and Z, and your divine masculine was like, no, actually it's X, Y, and Z, and you're going to do it this way. Like that kind of energy, I'm hearing shit starter energy, but, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to stir the pot here. I'm just reading what I'm picking up. So this is a rejection of all of that control, that need to be, to, to conform in some way, okay? And so... But also, I feel like that's kind of getting in the way here. What I do feel like is this person here that is holding the love and the appreciation kind of gets it, I feel like. This person, and this person is why, this is why they are kind of like holding back, in a sense, even though they have the Knight of Wands here, they've got the King of Cups, there's definitely some feeling here. But with the Knight of Pentacles and the Hermit, there's some, there's some hold back. They're like, I understand I see you for who you are. I know you, I, I, either they are aware, like they know what you've been through. Maybe you talk to them about it. Maybe they're just aware of the situation. Or intuitively, with the King of Cups, they're picking up on the fact that you, like, you've been through some shit or someone's been through some shit. And so they're not really willing to, they're not going to like just rush in like that. They're going to give you your space. But they know that you're not trying to be controlled. Um... With the emperor in reverse, I'm gonna I'm gonna clarify. Don't worry. I'm definitely gonna clarify. It's just with the emperor in reverse, that energy is a little bit confusing, to be honest. I do feel like I do feel like there's definitely a good amount of confusion in the situation. The two of swords in this deck does the key word is confusion. Okay, I want to clarify the emperor first.
And you know what's so funny? I woke up with um, a TLC song in my head. I can depend on myself. I don't need anybody else to be on my back like that. To be on my back like that. From a ooh on the TLC tip. <laughs> yes. I love that album. Um, I love TLC. But, um, and that's kind of the, get, the energy that I'm getting here from someone. independence but in a way it's kind of like an extreme form of independence it's like it, especially if you're coming out of if you're coming out of like a codependent situation or um codependence tendencies towards codependency it's almost like the the pendulum is swinging you know and balancing out in the sense that you were co like overly codependent or just codependent in the past and now you're in the opposite you're overly independent in some way in a way, but that's only temporary. It's just as the scales are balanced. And I really feel like whoever is trying to connect with you here, they get it. Okay. They get it. So it's not like, so it's like, it's almost like they're patiently waiting. Someone is patiently waiting. Okay. We're going to clarify the emperor in reverse first. Let's see what we've got here. Okay. All right. <laughs> the Knight of Wands again. Underneath, ooh, wow. Underneath the deck, you have the Chariot. Is Caution being thrown to the wind here with the Emperor in reverse? I'm getting an energy of allow yourself to feel your passions. Okay, you don't have to be so in control. With the chariot in reverse, there's there's really some sort of movement. There's some serious movement coming through here, guys. I'm gonna get, I want to pull one more. Let's just get one more clarification here. Ah, ah look at that. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh my goodness gracious, guys. Underneath the deck is the King of Pentacles again. And then, and then, you got the Six of Cups and the Ten of Cups. Let this person in. Let this situation happen. The Emperor in reverse is saying there, there are controlling energies that are standing in the way. Okay, remember when I said I was feeling like that person that's trying to come forward as the King of Pentacles is the real deal. Guys, this person, for some of you, I don't know who this is for, but th th this person is the real deal or can be the real deal. You got to let it happen, though. The Emperor in reverse here is saying that there are energies that are just too controlling. But it's fearful. I really feel like it's fearful. Some of you have just come out of a pretty nasty situation. Okay. Okay, but someone here, one of you has the Ace of Wands, but that's in reverse. It's like you're blocking this new creative, passionate start because of the Two of Swords. And you're in like this hanged man mode. And even though I said some of, yes, some of you have put yourself in this position, like the hanged man is an energy in this situation. It's like, um, what is, it's basically circumstantial because you're in this two of swords sick date. But it's almost like you've subconsciously put yourself in this hanged man mode because you're refusing, you're refusing to see things differently. And then this person on the other side has the Knight of Wands, like they're ready to go. The Hermit, it's like, it's almost like they, I, I feel like this person on this side has gone through a spiritual awakening. And this person actually might be in the process of going through that spiritual awakening. Okay, well that makes a lot more sense. But in between here, You've got, I mean, you've got the Six of Cups and the Ten of Cups on the pay, the Knight of Wands again with the King of Cups, I'm sorry, the King of Pentacles again. And then on this side, you've got the King of Cups. I really, the King of Cups and the Knight of Pentacles, you have the King, you have the Queen of Pentacles on this side in the, in the beginning of the reading. 
with the Page of Pentacles, which could be an offer coming through to that Queen of Pentacles, that, that person that's wifey status. Yeah? I want to clarify this person now. This person that's potentially going through a spiritual awakening, okay? Let's clarify. Six of Pentacles. Okay. <laughs> I, swear to, I swear to God, guys, you can't make this shit up. Look at this. Look at this. The King of Pentacles and the Eight of Wands. The King of Pentacles came out again. All right, that, yo, homeboy ain't going nowhere. <laughs> and then we have the Knight of Cups. Someone is really trying to offer this person something here. Okay. And it's a balanced offer. This person with the King of Pentacles here that's trying to come forward for you is the real deal. I, I told you guys, it's the real deal. It may not look like it now, and it actually, it really doesn't, yeah, the universe is confirming that even before I say it. It doesn't have to look like it right now. Spend some time getting to know each other. Communicate. Eight of Wands is that communication, but it's also that swift movement, okay? Look, you've got the Eight of Wands, and you've got the Knight of Wands on here twice, plus the Knight of Cups. Someone is trying to really get to know someone better, and what I feel like here is really this King of Pentacles is also the same person that's the King of Cups, okay? This person gets it. So this is why they're not necessarily going anywhere. This is why they have that Knight of Pentacles energy. They're taking it slow. Even though they feel all this fiery, passionate connection, maybe even, they may even be in love with you. They may have just fallen in love with you, like, just like that. But they respect you in a way. They respect you enough. <clears throat> they get it enough at this point to take it slow to show up as the King of Pentacles, which is steady, stable, grounded, financially abundant, someone that's, you know, probably about the business. But because they're about the business, they're also about the business when it comes to a relationship, knowing what it takes to really, really make something solid. Not shying away from a commitment, not shying away from the energies of putting forth that, that effort to really nail down a commitment. I mean, I'm feeling 10 of pentacles energy here too. All right, so now let's clarify. I wanna get some further clarification for this person here. This is the person that went through their spiritual awakening already. And it's, and it's that spiritual awakening that they've gone through that has helped them get to the period, the position where they can be like, okay, <laughs> okay, um, I get it. I'll move slow here. Now, I just did a shuffle. Nothing came out. But then my intuition was like, Eric, look at the bottom of the deck. The Ace of Cups, guys. The Ace of Cups. And this is on this person right here. So like I said, King of Cups, Ace of Cups. There is love here. There is appreciation. There is respect. If it's not, if they don't, or if you don't want to call it love right now, even though the universe is laughing, is just laughing at you because we all know, this is the universe talking here. We all know that it's actually true love here. But if you, whatever you want to call it, that's fine. <laughs> but it's also a deep, amount of respect. Why? Because you are exhibiting this self-love here to you. And this is why it's to yourself. And this is why this person is kind of, even though they have the Knight of Wands, even though they have the King of Cups, even though they have the King of Cups Pentacles here, they're still taking it slow with this Knight of Pentacles energy. What's underneath that? Ah! I was just like, what's underneath the Knight of Pentacles here? The Magician. Good Lord, guys, this is like, this is a great reading. I'm really loving this right now. I'm gonna do this so that you can see that. Okay, so let's get some clarification here for this person. Eight of Pentacles, set, and I think the Seven of Pentacles. Woo, 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 woo. Good Lord, you guys. Ah, there's that Ten of Wands again, and look at this. 
Underneath the deck, you've got the Two of Swords again. Okay? Wow. But you got the Eight of Pentacles, the Seven of Pentacles. That's exactly what I thought. The Eight of Pentacles and the Seven of Pentacles. Someone is really, this person is really willing to put in the work, to plant the seeds to gain, to plant the seeds to get the harvest, to do the work to get the harvest that they want. Okay? Wow. And you've got, wow. And you've got the Ace of Pentacles here. I told you, they want to offer you something. They're coming forward with that offer. Okay? And this, I mean, we could be talking, we could be talking business. Don't get me wrong. We have a lot of pentacles here. We could be talking business. But what I'm really taught, what I'm really picking up on, for the most part, this is a romantic situation. But this is a romantic situation that's grounded in the earth. That's grounded in real shit. Okay? Tangible things. Um, um, I, um, <laughs> you know, the real deal. This is commitment, long-term, lifetime commitment I'm hearing. But you see here, now we've got the Ten of Wands and we've got the Two of Swords, okay? This person, now especially if they're an Earth sign, they can really carry carry a heavy load, right? But if they're not an Earth sign, they're still, they're carrying the weight of this responsibility, all right? Um, they're carrying the weight of this responsibility here, but they're willing to do it. Like they're willing to go through, it's almost like they're willing to jump through hurdles in order to make this happen. But now I'm going to, I'm going to say, you know, fall back on the ego there because just because they're willing to jump through some, some, some loops, some hoops and some jump over some hurdles and stuff doesn't mean that they're going to do it forever. And nor should anyone take advantage of that because that's abusive, okay? That is very abusive. I do not condone, condone that. I mean, for me personally, as soon as I'm aware that someone is really like jumping through leaps and hurdles for me, at that point, it's like, ooh, okay, I got to back off this two of swords energy here. Oh, guys, you got, I wish y'all, hold on. I want to take a picture of the sky because it's just so beautiful and I'm going to post it and I see maybe it'll help maybe it'll work no not selfies <laughs> sorry guys I really want to take a picture of this so you can see yeah look at that that is just gorgeous just gorgeous I'm going to share it with you guys because it's just so beautiful anyway um now the Two of Swords here, on this side of the situation, I guess I want to say you guys are mirroring each other a little bit. Um, because I feel like this person is really feeling the effects of this Two of Swords here. That you, that person, we're going to call this person A, we're going to call this person B. Person B is feeling the pinch. <laughs> feeling the pinch of the Two of Swords held by person A, okay? It's not getting them down, for the most part. I really feel like they recognize it. They see it for what it is. And they're still willing to put it into work, but the Two of Swords here is a lot, has a lot to do with these burdens that is being carried by this person with the Ten of Wands. It's very interesting that it's very interesting that I'm seeing the Ten of Wands in that way instead of like you know um, they're they're just carrying it's like they're willing to carry these burdens. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna get into some oracle guidance here. Let's do the we're gonna do the whispers of love first in relation to this part of the situation. And then I'm going to close the meeting with Oracle Guidance from the Crystal Mandala deck. Yeah? Okay, here we go. Good lord, guys. 
Underneath the deck is love makes the difference. Love can help heal past hurts and provides a sense of security, self-worth, and importance. And that's a really that's a really good thing to bring up right now. For many of you, this is in, in person A's situation here. Um, opening yourself back up to love will actually help you heal through the past. But look at what flew out over there. The union of hearts. There is a connection of love that defies explanation. And this fell right on person A's situation. So believe. Trust and believe, okay? You've got... Spend some quality time together. It's imperative that we spend quality time with those we are in significant relationships with, listening and talking to each other, okay? So spend some quality time with this person. If this person is trying to, like, you know, take you out on a date, chat, like, whatever, maybe, maybe go ahead and do so. You don't have to be so afraid of it, yeah? Act as if your partner is here. Whether you have someone in your life or not, act as if they are with you so you will always consider them. Okay, and then also you have treasure your loved ones. It is important to love others deeply. There's no reason to be afraid of love, guys. Okay, there is no reason. All right, good Lord. We're like an hour in. Whew, this is a long one. Hey, weekend edition. <laughs> All right, guys. But this really feels good, okay? With the Six of Cups, this could either be a soulmate or just someone from the past. But hey, you've got the Ten of Cups on that. So you really don't need to be so afraid of it. This is wish fulfillment here, guys. The star did come out in the beginning of the reading. There we go. One message is all we need. One message is all we need. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go with this right now. What do we have here? Crossroads of Destiny. Goddess Hecate and Mika. Card number 42. Mm, yeah, this is all we need, okay. Oops. Already. <laughs> Monkey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Crossroad of Destiny. We bring you the empowerment of the crossroad of destiny. You are at a pivotal point on your life journey. This may be obvious to you with a potentially life changing decision before you. Yeah, two of swords. Or you must, you may not realize the impact that an apparently insignificant choice is going to have on your future. Again, two of swords energy. Either way, you are at a point where you can leave the past behind and chart your course for a new adventurous chapter to begin in your life. This is not something you need to be frightened of. It is a sign you are progressing on your path. The crossroad of destiny happens when you have mastered a cycle in your life and a new cycle is before you. It is an opportunity that you can take best advantage of by listening to your heart. This is literally speaking to getting yourself out of this Two of Swords energy, whoever person A is. Oh God, okay, I really wanna read this for you guys. There is a certain comfort in familiarity. The world would have been a li would have been living in I'm sorry, the world you have been living in has some sort of boundary, some degree of predictability, and certain things, people, or situations you can reply upon, I'm sorry, rely upon to behave in particular ways. These familiarities can be a way you choose to feel secure, even if you know deep within that life is always evolving, and so are you, and that things need to change to stay fresh, healthy, and inspired. The truth is that familiarity doesn't really create security. Your mind may like to think it does, but it is an illusion. All things change in time. This is a natural law. What you and your mind need to remember is that you can choose to feel secure even though changing circumstances that lead you towards an even I'm sorry, even through changing circumstances that lead you towards an unknown world. That unknown world will will eventually become known to you with its own boundaries and some degree of predictability and familiarity until, again, change knocks at your door 
<coughs> or kicks it down, and you are facing another crossroads in your life, needing to make decisions that will affect your future. The security you can feel in this process comes from knowing that this is not random, though it might seem that way at the time. Destiny is not simply a, des a destination, it is a living process that will cause growth and evolution in you as you shed that which no longer serves your soul and open to receive that which does. You may wish to understand all the possible ramifications of your decisions, all possible outcomes, and then make a clear logical choice as to what will best serve you. Okay. Okay, I'm going to read these last two paragraphs. Although you can rely on logic and analysis, and perhaps you wish to start there if you are so inclined, it is through listening to your heart, the inner knowing and voice of intuition within that will bring you the most joyful experience. You can either play it safe or play it true. The heart will guide you to truth. The choice might scare you at first, or you might feel excited about what you feel your heart is asking you to do. Your mind may not understand and therefore create doubt, but the heart is its own wise genius beyond compare. It is the vehicle through which the divine plan is felt, and it is your flawless inner compass. The, this oracle comes to you with a message. Let all your choices come from your heart. Even if it feels right for your heart, I'm sorry, if it feels right for your heart and there is joy there, even if you have to search beneath all the what if something goes wrong fears of the mind to find it, then do it. If you have recently made such a decision and are waiting to see if the sky is going to fall on, in on top of you, this oracle affirms you have crossed the threshold into a new way and that is, and that it is time to leave the fears of the past behind you now. I mean... Come on, that couldn't be any more perfect. All right, guys. So there it is. Thank you so much for spending an hour with me this morning. <laughs> um, much love to you all. I hope you have a great weekend. Um, I look forward to connecting with you again for morning coffee on Monday. But stay tuned, guys, because I have some readings, some extra readings coming out. Um, I will be doing What Does Spirit Want You to Know this weekend. And then I hope to see you guys on Sunday for our live Twin Flame Mirror reading. Now, um, just about the Twin Flame Mirror reading, that's going through a little bit of a redefinition, a redefinement, okay? I am still going to be doing it, um, but I'm redefining how it is. I'm opening, up, op opening the reading up to the collective because everybody has masculine and feminine energy within. And so the lessons that I personally have learned on the Twin Flame journey, I think are lessons that everybody could learn. And I don't necessarily think you have to be on a Twin Flame journey to learn it, okay? So um, it's still gonna be Twin Flames. And I'm still calling it Twin Flames because the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine ultimately are Divine Twin Flames, okay? And we all have these energies within. So. It's going to be a mirror reading, okay? And I'm opening it up to the general public. So anybody that wants to tune in, if you feel like there are some messages you might get from it, please don't hesitate to join us. I look forward to seeing all of you guys there Sunday, the 28th. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry if you heard my stomach. I'm a little hungry. <laughs> but um, Sunday, the 28th, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yes, because I am in New York City, so I'm on the East Coast. But... Other than that, even if you're not joining us for that, I still hope you guys have a great weekend. Much, much love to you guys. Oh, and I did, I was able to finish recording the Zodiac readings for November, so those are going to be coming out. I just have to do some editing for them, and those will be out this weekend, I think. Yeah, I'm going to put them out this weekend. Okay, I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great weekend, and I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Yeah, take care. Mwah! Bye! Hee <laughs> hee.